Hello, this is Abina at Cross Keys Crafts. Today I would like to create some bunting for the upcoming coronation of King Charles III. And I'm going to use the Simply Made Crafts Best of British Paper Pack, so you can't see the bottom there. Um, that's the 12 by 12 sheets, and they are 250 GSM. I'm not sure whether these are still available. Um, but many of you might have bought these if they aren't available anymore because somebody must have bought them. And I'm going to sh just show you what I've planned. Some of these elements of the bunting will be so ridiculously easy that I wasn't it was even contemplating whether I should show you what I'm doing. And then some are a bit more creative and crafty, but I try not to keep it to, uh, make it too complicated because I want to have this done. Um, quite quickly I've got other things planned for next week and also I need a lot of bunting for my pub downstairs so the first one I'm going to do and I'm going to, I'm going to show you uh, tell you this I'm not going to show you because it is so ridiculously easy one of these sheets has got six union jacks on this and the width is actually um, just um, a bit wider than the standard hole punch. I tested this on a strip of paper. I just um, punched two holes to test this and the width whether this would work because all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut apart the Union Jacks. I will have to half it here in the middle and I will cut the sides down accordingly so they all are the same size. And uh, yeah, this is all I'm going to do with these because these give me uh, six elements and I think there are three of each design in here. So uh, I will have that many elements anyway. I think they're one sided, but it doesn't matter for where I'm hanging them up in the pub. So the second paper I decided to use is this one because there's some other designs I might keep for other projects like the... Um, Big Ben here and the Tower Bridge but this one is definitely coronation themed so I'm going to use this up this time and I'm cutting it almost to the same size as in I will have um, three panels so that will be four by four inches and there will be six inches long so I'm going to do that first and then I'm going to show you how I will decorate these. So I have cut my panels. There were actually four sheets of each design. So um, I ended up with 24 of these. So I've got plenty here. I don't think I will cut as many Union Jacks because I can use the Union Jack for other projects. So and to put a design on this, I decided to put the um, King, Pink King Charles as a name on it. I'm not bothering about the third, but I didn't want to just put the letters on there so I decided to use some gold cardstock and this is just cheap gold cardstock from um, B&M only cost two pounds a pack and I'm going to cut this out with my circle die let me just check the size of this this is just over two and a half inches but obviously it's up to you really um, but this is a nice circle die I have and I'm going to cut this out together with the letter. So I will end up with a circle that has got a cutout in the shape of the letter. Make sure if you've got letters like these that you keep the inside because you have to glue this back down. And then these will go on here. And because I like to do things quicker if I can, I can have a shortcut. I'm going to cut two at the same time and the cardstock is thin enough. This should actually work. I know that the stitched um, design will probably um, not show on the second piece. But anyway, it saves me from having to send through the die cutting machine 24 times. So this time, uh, this way, I only have to do it 12 times, if I'm not mistaken. No, this is only I miscounted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven times rather than twenty-two. I wish I had a crown die because that would be really nice in between. Maybe I don't have the third after all. I'll have a think about this. 
but it helped me to write this down. You can see I just had to even count the individual letters because I wanted to see whether there are any letters I need to double up on, but I'm okay with this one. So I shall be doing that quickly and then I'll show you how to put them together. Just quickly popping in, I realised that I only have to put in the machine, um, I can't even work it out now, six times if I cut two letters at the same time. So I've got this doubled up, but I'm also doing um, two different letters. And I don't have another round die in that size, but I have got this flower die, so I thought that would work as well. So I'm alternating these shapes. So I just quickly wanted to show you this because I do like a shortcut and I am a bit lazy. So this time I'm getting four letters, two of each, done at the same time. If you find that the letter hasn't really cut through on the second layer, by the way, the stitching does show on the second layer, it's easy just to align this, um, align this again. It actually just pops in so I can send this through the die cutting machine again. So I have die cut all my letters. Apologies, by the way, uh, if you hear any background noises, it's Friday night and the pub is in full swing downstairs. So you might hear people shout and you might hear music. So I just wanted to show you uh, a, f a few of these letters here. Obviously, the straightforward ones are these. I just will glue them down like this and I've got the letters. And also remember... You've got the actual letters as well to use. I'll have a think how I use these on some other elements of the bunting. But I just wanted to show you how to assemble um, the A and I also will show you how I will do the third. So this obviously I just need to glue this down. I'm just using my Kolal glue. Any glue would be fine for this. You can use a quick grab glue or even a glue pen. So I'm just I'm putting this down in the lower half because I will have the um, holes at the top with the ribbon. So I'll make sure this is further to the bottom and I'll try to have them equally. So I have saved my little bits here. Let me just get my tweezers because it's always useful to have tweezers for the delicate bits. Can't even pick it up here. So this is the inner bit that goes in the A. In order to decide where it goes, I'm just using my positive here, my A. And now I know where to put the glue. I'm just putting a bit down. I try not to get anything onto the actual letter. And then I can sit this down, press it down. And now it's in place. I can take the letter out again. And as simple as that, you've got the letter A. Obviously, with the background, it's quite busy and you might not have the full effect. But as soon as the light hits the gold, I think it's quite nice, the effect. So with the third, we... OK, so I found a very simple solution. I haven't cut this apart yet. I told you I would, but I'll do this afterwards. I will just use these letters on the Union Jack. I think this pops really, really nicely because the colours are quite dark. So I'm going to use these letters for the Union Jack. Very simple. To step up the decorations of my bunting, I have decided to create some rosettes. And these are fairly easy to make if you use the right thickness of paper. I tried this first with some heavier cardstock and I think this was is about let's say 260 but I found this was really really difficult to fold so I suggest you use a lighter cardstock. I used 210 GSM but I think you could actually use something thinner um, unless you need these for you know to be really really sturdy you can probably even make these from paper like 160 gsm what i did for this is i took a piece of a4 cardstock and you can just see that here with my red example and i scored this at quarter inch gaps so i scored this at quarter a half 
three quarters and one inch and then all the way through. And I thought it would be easier to do the whole sheet and then cut this apart. I cut the A4 strip, sorry, the A4 piece of paper into four strips. These are just over two inches wide. And I then decided to start with the folding. I tried to fold the whole piece, but it was a bit tricky. So, and what I found when I tried to fold it is the easiest thing to do is just to, um, rather than um, doing a mountain fold, valley fold, mountain fold, is to do mountain folds at every other one. So if you start on one side here, yeah, just leave one out and then do a mountain fold again. And then the one again. So if you can see from the other side there, I'm leaving this one and I'm doing a mountain fold. Again, fold over to mountain fold. And it's important that you burnish these. So when you've done it all through the st uh, strip, I'm not going to do this now, I'm going to do it off screen in a moment. You then turn the whole thing over and you do the same thing now with these um, bits you haven't folded yet. So again, do a mountain fold. Miss the one out you've already done. Fold this one and do a mountain fold. And then you end up with all the pieces, all the um, score lines burnished and folded. So as I said, I'm going to do this offline. The other thing I then did is I cut the whole strip apart. At first I thought I'd leave it at this um, size, but the problem is the um, higher or the wider the strip is, the bigger the um, rosette gets. And I found I couldn't get all the way around. I would have had to extend it. You can obviously make bigger ones, but then you need a longer piece. So I just, after I had scored this all and burnished it, I'd sort of stretch it out a little bit again and put it in my guillotine. I'm not quite sure how the uh, cutting machines work where you have to um, lay it in and put a wheel over that. But for my guillotine, it was fine. I sort of stretch it out, make sure it's fairly even in the middle. And then I cut this apart again. So I um, end, ended up with a one inch or just over one inch strip and scored all the way through. And I'll show you what this looks like when it's finished. So the folding took me about five minutes, not longer. So I just thought I'd show you this quickly because obviously it's already started to bend a little bit. But all I did was open my guillotine, put this in just at one inch, make sure the top is on one inch and the bottom is on one inch and I've more or less lined it up. And then I can just... And it might be a bit wider than is, I can already see it's a different length there at the bottom, but it doesn't really matter because most of it will be hidden by the embellishments. So obviously once this is a bit wider, this one's a bit lower, but it doesn't, sorry, a bit thinner, but it doesn't matter. So let me just zoom in again. What I then did was I basically closed this like this you've got one bit going up one bit coming down and i just put some of my quick grab glue on this and turned this into basically into a ring so you're coming around you make sure you don't twist it just come round and just put some glue on it and don't worry about this being different widths now that will all be hidden in the middle of the rosette. So I'm doing the same with this one. And I'm leaving this to dry quickly. Hope you can see, I hope I wasn't off camera now. So I'm just leaving these to dry for a moment. And I've got my heat gun already. Um, I saw my hot glue gun. So, um, if you want to craft along, make sure you've got this nice and hot because you will be needing that in a moment. Now, this is the fiddly bit. First of all, I suggest you cut this down a little bit where it's too wide, just a little bit 
to make it a bit more even. So what I have got here, this is a lid from some ice cream. You could also use a lid from um, like a coffee, um, instant coffee or something like that. Or even maybe a lid from a, you know, a pretty box or something. What it does this is um, when I press this down, this will hold the shape a bit for me because this is the tricky bit. You now need to make sure that you fold these all down and you want to keep this into in a round shape. So I'm just pressing these all down and it all come together. But I found before when I didn't have the lid, it wanted to jump back. And also this helps you to hold it in place whilst you're applying the hot glue. Because you really don't want to burn your fingers and hold this down with your hand and then get your fingers in the way. So as you can see, I'm just pressing these down. I want to make sure that the bit where it overlaps, the uneven bit, goes in the inside of the circle. I can't even find it now. Oh, I think it was here. Not that it really matters. So, well, you can. I hope you can see what I'm doing now. So I'm now pressing this down. And once you've cut it all down, you will find it does get into shape on its own. There we go. So what this does is it helps you sort of, it doesn't pop out. This one's a bit doubled up. I have to get that out again. Let's make sure the mountain folds are really mountain folds. Just having a look here. There we go. That's, that, that, that's the tricky thing because it wants to flip over and you don't want that. Quite sure what it's doing here. Whether I've got the wrong way around. No, it is correct here. So as you can see, it's not super easy, but easy enough. I'll just get my scissors in the way. I think there is one of the mountain folds doesn't want to stay mountain fold. The same with this one here. Now we've got it done. So as you can see, hopefully now. That's in place now. The first one, by the way, with this one here where I didn't use the lid, I pushed them all closer in. And then you've got a different size. This actually stays in place now, which is great. With this one, I nearly burnt my fingers. So you can vary the size a little bit if you want to. I have cut two circles from some uh, scrap paper because I will put some um, ephemera on the top anyway. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like. And if you're happy with this and these are evenly spaced out, all you do is you put your hot glue around here in a circle and you see it wants to pop out again. So keep your finger on it in one, in one place or maybe two places and then you just stick this on the top and hold it down in the middle until the glue is cold enough and keeps it in place. That happens quite quickly. And now I can take this out. Do the same on the other side. Just apply the glue. I'm very generous with the glue because it will all be hidden anyway. And I'll just press this down. And then this is my finished rosette. Make sure it's sort of flat so that when I put it onto the bunting later on, it is fairly flat and doesn't stick out too much. There you go. Very easy rosette. And I'll show you in a moment how I'm going to decorate these on the bunting. So I have decided to put my rosettes on some blue cardstock. I think I bought this from Craft Stash. It's the Creative Expressions Deep Blue cardstock. It's 240 GSM, so it's quite sturdy. And it is blue enough um, to work for a royal theme, and it goes nicely with the Union Jack. So I cut this to size. Um, Obviously, with it being a four card stock and not 12 by 12, these are a wee bit shorter than the other pieces of the bunting. If you want to 
compare this here but by the time they hang up I don't think anyone will notice the difference so I have looked through my ephemera um, so this is a Simply Made Crafts Best of British Ephemera but I'm keeping all the general uh, British Ephemera like the post box and the corgis and the little uh, beef eaters but I decided to use anything coronation themed because I know I won't probably have the opportunity to use these again so my idea is basically to have something here at the top just to fill the space a little bit and I'm not quite sure how many rosettes I will make but with this one I thought I can use the um, could you call it an apple and a scepter so just glue this on and I'm just going to use my quick wrap glue because this is all sturdy now I can just apply it to the disc here just in the middle and um setting this down here I'm just rotating it a little bit because some areas are folded a bit more than others so I'm just putting it down here just pressing it down a bit as well because it is a bit wobbly again apologies if you do hear any noises I definitely most certainly can just make sure yeah it does grab so I will do the same with this one here at the top and it's really just a question of preference and just playing along so we're playing playing around with these so I'm hoping I can use this bunting I will lower it a bit just in case I will probably feed this ribbon through so I want this bit to be a bit lower so it won't get too much in the way I will have it central so I'm just putting this behind just, I tell you what it still moves a bit because I think it's not grabbing properly so let me put this one down first put the paper piece on and I might have to glue the rosettes down again onto the um, bunting piece just with um, the hot glue so on this I thought I could just sit I'll actually put it at an angle I think that might be quite nice make it two o'clock at ten o'clock there and as I said I will just play around with these because I think the larger crowns will go nicely here in the middle um, anything that covers up the middle of the rosette will actually be nice and I might create a few pieces where I don't have the rosette but I will use these pieces here until I've used them all up because I said because I don't think I will be needing these again and I will definitely show you the finished pieces and I'm hoping that um, before I post this I might be able to hang it up so you can have a look what the whole bunting looks like so I have crafted a bit in front of the TV um, and now I'm ready to show you what I have created. I will make two more of uh, these with the rosette, but these are the ones you've already seen these. So as I said, I will make two more of these. Then I have two sets of these, and they're the ones you've already seen. And as I said, I will hang them up tomorrow morning. And just as a trial run, I will take them off again and then you can see what they look like when they're actually hanging up. And then, as planned, I have stuck these letters down on the Union Jacks, but I was one card or letter short because there's only 11 letters. So I just chose one of the corgis and put it in the centre here to go with this one. And then the other set of the letters... I just decided to put on blue card, the same as I used for the rosettes. But I put the crown ephemera on top of the letters. But again, I was short one crown. This is why the S has got the Union Jack. If I had planned ahead, I would have put that in the middle of the name. But I just alternated these a little bit and I still need to put the holes in the top. I just spotted that. So, um, to hang these up. I decided to mostly use this red and white twine because I've got lots of that. But another thing you could use is just some ribbon. 
I think that will go through it nicely. But also, like this sort of gift um, ribbon would work nicely. Sometimes I like to use this because it's quite sturdy. I will thread these through tomorrow, but I will not cut this down until I know where I'm putting things. Oh, two more things I found in my stash, but I might not use it. It's this little red bus um, ribbon. I think I got this from the works, but years ago. And I also, funnily enough, found this ribbon, but it'll be too wide. It's called Best of British. I remember buying that on a market once, but I think um, if I use this, I have to do something different with this because it won't go through the holes on the top here. So, yeah, um, this is my bunting idea. As I said, I will add another bit of video um, at the end here to show you what it looks like when it's hanging up. And if you like this bunting, you might want to give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating, you might want to subscribe to my channel. I'd be very happy about that. And I'll see you soon with another video. Hello again. It's the next day. And I was taking photos of my bunting pieces. And I thought, I don't like this. I don't like how the pattern peeps through here. I think it is a bit too busy. So I decided to cut letters again just in white cardstock um, to inlay these pieces and I think that would be so much nicer and just so much less busy. Um, I said before I'm a bit lazy, I like a shortcut so I cut these um, two um, layers at a time and a little tip for you if you do this, this is really thin cardstock and they stick together from the pressure of the die cutting machine but all you need to do is just bend these a little bit and then they come apart very easily so I can now use these on all the bunting pieces and just inlay them and glue them down like this just as a little tip for you and as I said before I'm going to hang this up later oh by the way I decided to go for the ribbon after all rather than the twine because the advantage with the ribbon is because it is a bit wider once you have spread out the pieces they won't move as much and you can decide where you're going to have them hanging and you know the gaps between them they're not going to move once I've put the ribbon through this so I shall be doing that so and as I said before I'm going to have a try run later hang these up and then take another video of what they look like hanging up Okay, so I have hung up three of my four buntings and at the same time I'm going to advertise my pub. So if you ever come to the to Penryn site in Llandidno, North Wales, you're welcome here. We're a little village pub. So these are the two buntings. Sorry if I'm wobbling a bit. So I'll put the more ornate ones here. On the bar and then without rushing too much I'm going to show you can already see it there I'll put one of the golden letters ones onto the shelf here and I'm really pleased with it now that it has got the wide letters inset there there you go and going to make one more well I've created it but I haven't put it on the ribbon yet for the other room I'll just quickly show you our view so I will quickly nip up to my craft room and show you one more tip for how to manage the ribbon and how to thread it through so my two little tips for the ribbon are this these so you need a piece of sellotape and what you do is basically you create like the end of a shoelace with a sellotape. So you just put it on the end there and then just twist it round like this. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just showing you the result in a second. And you can cut it off a little bit. And then what you're left with is this and this will allow you to feed it very easily through the holes of your bunting pieces and then i wanted to show you how to um finish the ribbon off on the other side to um stop it from fraying 
And all you do for, need for that is a lighter. Make sure you don't put it onto the highest flame, just a medium one like this. And you use the edge of the flame, don't use the flame itself. And you just go along here and just use the heat from the flame to seal this off. And what happens is the fibers, because they're, I think, because they're plastic, they just seal off. They're like glued down now and this doesn't fray anymore now. And that's very useful to know.